All right, let's talk coffee. For most of us, it's the non-negotiable ritual that kickstarts our day. The aromatic steam, the comforting warmth, the jolt of caffeine that turns us from groaning zombies into functioning human beings. It's a good thing, a very good thing. But what if I told you that your daily cup holds a secret, a hidden layer of flavor waiting to be unlocked? What if I told you the key isn't a newfangled brewing machine or an exotic bean from a faraway land, but a process as old as bread and beer? I'm talking about fermentation, and it's about to change how you think about your morning joe. So what in the name of all that is caffeinated is fermented coffee? Now don't go picturing a bubbly kombucha-like brew. No, no. The fermentation happens long before the beans ever meet your grinder. Think of it as a spa day for coffee cherries. After being picked, these little red fruits are allowed to rest. And let nature's tiniest helpers, we're talking yeasts and bacteria, get to work. These microscopic critters feast on the sweet, sticky mucilage, that's the fruity pulp, surrounding the coffee bean. It's a controlled, flavorful party, and the bean is the guest of honor. This process is all about transformation, breaking down compounds to build up something new and utterly delicious. This isn't some new trendy gimmick, oh no. Fermentation has been a part of coffee processing for, well, a very long time, often by necessity. But now, specialty coffee producers are harnessing this ancient technique with scientific precision. They're not just letting things happen, they're directing the show. By controlling the time, the temperature, and the specific microorganisms involved, they can coax out an incredible spectrum of flavors. Imagine notes of ripe strawberry, tropical pineapple, or even a hint of champagne-like effervescence in your cup. So, you've got your standard run-of-the-mill coffee bean on one side, and this fancy, fermented fella on the other. What's the real difference in the cup? Let's break it down. Your typical, non-fermented or minimally fermented coffee is often processed using a natural method is often processed using a honey method where the cherry is dried whole or given a quick wash. This often results in classic comforting flavors we all know and love, chocolate nuts, caramel, and a straightforward coffee taste. It's reliable, it's good. Now enter the fermented bean. Fermentation breaks down complex sugars and creates new aromatic compounds. The flavor profile is wildly different. It's less about deep roasty notes and more about brightness, clarity, and fruit. The acidity is more pronounced but also more complex and pleasant. So we've journeyed from the coffee cherry to the fermentation tank and all the way to the final cup. We've seen how a controlled microbial party can transform a good bean into a great one, unlocking a universe of flavors that typical processing methods just can't touch. We're talking about a cup that can taste like strawberries, jasmine, or even sparkling wine. This isn't about replacing your favorite dark roast, it's about expanding your coffee horizons. It's about understanding that coffee doesn't have to be just one thing, it can be a complex culinary experience, as nuanced and exciting as any fine food. Is it healthier? The evidence points to yes, at least in some ways. By breaking down certain compounds, fermentation can make coffee gentler on your digestive system. The process also acts as an additional quality control step, ensuring a cleaner bean from the get-go. You can certainly consider it a smarter cup of coffee. One that has been optimized by nature and science for both flavor and quality. The beauty of fermented coffee is that it tells a story. You're getting an agricultural and culinary work of art. There's only one thing left to do. Go out and try it. Now if you'll excuse me, I think I have a batch to brew.